Exploring the ocean floor or investigating an underwater cave often brings me face to face with the unexpected hazards of nature. But the hazards of a man-made waterway can be far more deadly, particularly when it passes through forbidden territory. My first encounter with a new kind of man-made hazard was about to take place at Nassau Beach Lodge in the Bahamas. I had been waiting to be contacted for a new assignment while in the company of a much more welcome and pleasant hazard, which soon fell victim to the inevitable interruption, a message informing me that my expected visitor was on his way to meet me in my room. Mike Nelson? That's right. Lee Bellum. Uh, State Department told me about you. All set up. Good. You understand, of course, I'm here strictly in an unofficial capacity. In fact, it might even be said that this is an entirely nonpartisan and privately sponsored venture. Well, it's legal, isn't it? Uh, it's legal, all right. That's all I care about. The man we want you to get out of Costa Delta is no ordinary refugee. His name is Fernando Casca. And he ran the only political opposition newspaper under the present dictatorship. And he may one day return as liberator of his country. In the interest of the free world. Could you turn off the light, please? Sure. In the meantime, Casca sought political asylum in a friendly embassy in the midst of the city. Now, as you know, Costa Delta is the stronghold of the dictatorship and as such has the most closely guarded harbor on the whole South American coast. Now, they can't keep Kask in the embassy indefinitely, yet it's only by a water route that we can ever hope to penetrate the city itself, right up to the embassy. Now, that's where you come in. Oh, I thought you said the embassy was in the middle of the city, not on the waterfront. Correct. But the larger part of Costa Delta is riddled with man-made canals, like this. One of these canals leads directly to the embassy's annex building, which is located within its extraterritorial grounds, and is accessible by way of this boathouse. Now, it's at this boathouse where you'll pick up Casca and guide him back out to the harbor, the same way you swam in. Well, it seems easy enough. The dictatorship agrees with you. That's why you'll find the entrance to the canal so closely guarded. In fact, the watch has been doubled ever since Casca found asylum in the embassy. And the canal was recognized as his most logical route of escape. Additional guards have been strategically stationed all along this anticipated route. Along with that, you'll have to cope with the constant vigil of the harbor patrol. Avoiding this patrol must be one of your prime efforts, considering that you may be spotted by it when our float plane drops you just outside the bay and picks you up there at a prearranged time with Casca. Now, Casca, you might suspect, is not an experienced diver. Still too easy? Not for a two-way trip. Hey, uh, why don't I make my first trip to the embassy on foot? Uh, you're too well known in your field to risk recognition. Besides, you'll need the exploratory experience to find the grill. Grill? It's something like a stationary submarine net, obstructing any underwater passage right at the opening of the canal. Uh -huh. That's right there. I see. Now, somewhere along this grill, there's an opening that's big enough for you to slip through. Now, you'll have to find that. Oh, that's right along here, eh? That's it. Now, after our plane drops you just outside the bay, you head directly for this buoy. Oh, and here's where the plane drops. Right That's right. On the buoys, yeah, I see. Uh -huh. Good. This buoy is your last surface checkpoint. 
Now, from there on into the embassy, you're going to have to travel strictly by compass. Always bear in mind, Nelson, that this harbor is full of eyes. And if they see that plane come down, they'll all be looking for you. As scheduled, we landed off the coast of Costa Delta at 7 a.m. The plane was to rendezvous with me promptly at 3 that afternoon. If I wasn't there, it would take off without me or Casca. Thirty seconds later, I hit the water and was on my own. Figuring that the plane might have been spotted, I tried to avoid Costa Delta's sharp eyes by heading deep as possible. I relied on my compass for further directions. My next checkpoint was just a few yards ahead so was the harbor patrol. Fortunately, the water wasn't too clear. That helped conceal me from the surface. End of the first lap. The next and toughest was yet to come and clearly visible. the harbor patrol continued its relentless search. I couldn't even guess whether they had spotted my bubbles. And in the murky water, I had gotten off course. The harbor entrance and its grill were several degrees off northeast. By now, I had reached the seawall. End of lap two. It was time to get my bearings again, even though it meant that I would again have to expose myself. The opening in the grill was supposed to be somewhere to the extreme left of the canal entrance. map did not pinpoint its exact position. When I spotted it, I breathed easier, but not too heavily, I hoped, because my telltale bubbles could be a dead giveaway. choppy surface and some plain old-fashioned luck permitted me to slip through into the canal unnoticed. But from here on, security measures were even tighter. Every inch of the restricted area seemed to be patrolled with a fine-tooth comb, and even a small trail of air bubbles could attract 
a barrage of bullets from which there would be no avenue of escape. As I passed the ladder, I made a mental note of its location, just in case. The sentry had come too close for comfort. If I passed him, he was bound to spot my bubble trail. The only way to get by was to hold my breath. was clear and free again, until some carefree youngsters decided to pick a spot just a few yards ahead for an impromptu swimming hole. I counted on them being sufficiently preoccupied with themselves to take a chance in passing them. Their splashing might even help in covering up my path. I had reached the final lap to the Embassy Annex building. Was this my correct destination? Or could its description fit the one next to it? There was only one way to find out. Head into it. In order to save a famous freedom fighter, I had penetrated Costa Delta's closely guarded interior for over a mile. And yet, I couldn't be sure that this was the embassy's boathouse, where I was to pick up Fernando Casca, the fugitive from the dictatorship. I particularly couldn't be sure, since there seemed to be no one there to meet me. And then it became quite obvious why. The boathouse doors were wide open. And a well-watched place like this was hardly appropriate for hearty welcomes. Somebody had been playing chess here, and only recently. I wanted to be sure that I wasn't the pawn. Hunting, old man. Rather early in the season, don't you think? That depends. Who are you expecting? Mike Nelson, of course. You're 20 minutes late. 
You caused us some rather anxious moments, you know. I had some anxious moments myself. I'm Lloyd Shepard, military attaché to the ambassador. Are you? I am. As Mr. Casker will no doubt confirm. Mike Nelson, meet Mr. Fernando Casca. The man all the shouting is about. From what I understand, well worth it. It's a privilege, sir. Thank you. You took much trouble for one man. Well, you've taken a lot of trouble for thousands. You must be very tired and hungry. You have one hour to restore your energy and one to give Mr. Casca some pointers on diving. That doesn't give us much time. Mr. Casca's a very apt pupil. <laughs> he learned to shoot the very moment they tried to capture him. Well, that's good. It's gonna be a rough trip. But I waste any time. It's all as clear as it ever will be. You can't afford any delays. The weather people report a storm brewing off the coast. If you keep your rendezvous to the exact minute, you may get out from under just in time. You sure you feel up to it, old man? The spirit is willing. Ask him about the rest, don't we? You're gonna be fine. Thanks. Nice meeting you. Vaya con Dios, old man. Once he got in the water, Casca handled himself well. Surprisingly enough, in his first underwater experience, his breathing, too, seemed to come quite easy. It seemed that all was going well, until I discovered that Casca's mask was full of water, that he was not able to clear it. With patrols becoming more concentrated as we went on, it was impossible to surface. For an inexperienced diver, there is nothing more horrifying than water filling his mask. Breathing is difficult and the sense of suffocation is almost too much to cope with. In spite of his panic, Casca held on fully aware of the even greater danger above. If we were to pass him now, without him seeing our telltale bubbles, we both would have to hold our breath. I tried to make Casca understand about it as best I could, but only shutting off his air for him would do the trick. past the sentry all right. But the experience and the lack of air were too much for Casca. His mask was still full of water. Getting him to the surface immediately was the only way to save him from drowning. I remembered the latter that I had passed once before. Water up your nose. Your mask is tight enough. Oh, boy, huh? You're doing just fine. Now listen, if you happen to get any water in your mask this time, press hard on the side, this side, huh? roll over on the opposite side, and blow hard. You understand? I'll try. You're doing just great now. That's fine. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you get your breath? You want to go back now? See, let's go. See. <laughs> Get out, Brett. <laughs> Let's get out of here. We're not to jump. From here? It's the only way. We did a big jump with all these. Come on, we can do it. Okay. Uh, hold that mask tight against your face. That's right, like that. Come out, piece in. Bite hard on it. All right, boy, let's go. The impact of the dive had loosened Casca's mask again, filling it with water. I was hoping that he could clear it. But tricks like that couldn't be learned overnight, particularly under pressure. We had to pass the canal's entrance before I could give him any help. And he couldn't possibly take another air shut off. So we took a chance by passing through as fast as our full breath would allow. I was sure that a search for us had been started above and was being intensified every minute. But water serves as nature's finest camouflage. That had been the prime consideration in the original concept of this mission. Now that I had regained my bearings, and Casca seemed to have gotten a better feel of things, I thought it safer to take the home stretch at the lowest and safest level. Down here it felt like home again. Nature gave you better odds than man. Rendezvous was on, with an unexpected reception committee at hand. was close, much too close. But for Casca now, the fight for freedom could go on. The fight that was only just beginning. Hi there, I'm Lloyd Bridges. Skin diving is certainly a lot of fun, and it's full of adventure. See some more of it again next week, huh? 
when there'll be another excursion into that fabulous underwater world of sea hunting.